top favorite Valentine's Day Barbie themed dolls of all time. She's a doll that kisses. Have you ever kissed anybody before, Barbie? I don't. Here's a lend up for me, Barbie, because you're so beautiful. Secret Hearts Barbie is like very evocative of iconic 90s Barbie. What is more Barbie than pink and glitter and ribbons and roses? She's beautiful. Hello and happy almost Valentine's Day. This is an exciting video because I love a great countdown and I love to hear people talking about their passion and their dolls. And of course, Christopher is very passionate about Barbie, we know that. And we're both very passionate about Valentine's Day. So this is a perfect video. In this video, Christopher is gonna share some of his top favorite Valentine's Day Barbie themed dolls of all time. He has some from his personal collection and then he's gonna count down some other ones that he doesn't have but maybe would love to have someday. So sit back and relax, enjoy. This is a Valentine's Day fun video. So enjoy Valentine's Day to the fullest and we're happy we can be a little bit a part of your world to help celebrate this wonderful joyous holiday. So come on in, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. This is a fun video. Thank you for doing it with uh, us. Thank you. Well, thanks for the idea. I love Valentine's Day. I love, I think the sentiment is like gross and sappy, but I am gross and sappy. So in lots of ways it, you know, works. It, it's, it's fun. And Mattel, of course, likes to participate in fun, festive marking occasions and anniversaries and celebrations and holidays. And I think Valentine's Day is a hard one because there's not like a central thing you do with other people besides like giving chocolate, right? <laughs> you're you're not around a tree or you're not, you know, it, I mean Easter has like a whole egg hunt and like other holidays I think have activities to sort of centralize your thing around, but Valentine's Day is like just about consumerism. And so <laughs> I think that's a really great excuse to partake in and enjoy Barbie. Um, but also I love pink and I love red and I love those together. And I just think that it's, it's a really perfect pairing. So I'm excited to see if any of my favorites end up on your list. I'm not talking about overtly, explicitly Valentine's Day themed Barbies only. I want to sprinkle in some that like I think are actually maybe more fitting to the essence of Valentine's Day without being that in their language. So we'll see what you think. So in no particular order I've got a list of 10 highlights that I think are fun and exciting and festive in the vein of Valentine's Day. And some of these are from my own collection and some of them are from the shop and some of them don't exist so they're in our collection of barbels. So I'll be sort of consulting different things throughout the video. First on my list is 1978's Kissing Barbie. I have one here in box but I actually have already unboxed her before. For the sake of like on-camera fun, I'll take her out again and sort of show you what she comes with and like whatever. This is a really specific, bizarre, wonderful, one-of-a-kind, very properly silly doll. Again, the early 70s or the late 70s rather and early 80s was a really like kitsch and gimmick focused period for Mattel. They had just come off of a whole season of like we don't want to necessarily lean into the maybe like simple femininity of Barbie or of womanhood. We want to, you know, show that she's capable and show that she is whatever. And so, like, softness and glamour sort of took a, a step back. In 78, it began to slowly trickle back into the canon of Barbie. And uh, <laughs> I think this is such a goofy example of what that looks like. So, Kissing Barbie has a one-of-a-kind mechanism. She is a, she's a doll that kisses. Okay, so maybe we can get in really closely on, on all of this here. She, she comes with her own lipstick and she comes with a bunch of what I'm going to call valentines. They're not explicitly described as much, but but they, they're little, you know, envelopes that have S-W-A-K on them, you know, sealed with a kiss. I think this is very, very appropriate for a Valentine's Day Barbie. Her gimmick is that she's got a button in her back that when you press, she sort of like arches her neck and pushes her mouth forward and there's like a, there's a crunchy thing in the doll gross, bear with me, <laughs> that when you compress the button makes a sort of crunching sound that is supposed to sound like a 
when you kiss somebody. I think that's a stretch, but I wanna show you what that sounds like and what that looks like. She's already been out of the box, so this is not like, you know, awful, but I wanna show you sort of what's going on. First of all, I think this is so pretty. Like the graphics on this are just beautiful. Again, it's my constant <laughs> lament of like a, of a fast food menu. Like I'm not getting what I ordered with the illustrations, but they're beautiful anyway. She's got this really incredible dress that I'll, I'll show you closer in a moment actually has little prints of like smooches all over it the way you would leave like with lipstick. It's very pretty, very fun, cutesy 70s graphics. She has her tube of lipstick here that is allegedly, it's a liquid lipstick. I don't know how this works. This is solidly plastic. It's plastic all the way through. It's hollow. I could not find any information anywhere about this pertaining to what it was like when it was new out of the package. I have no idea. So if you had Kissing Barbie when you were younger, please inform me. This is a mystery to me. The idea is that you're supposed to apply this to her mouth and then she can leave like prints of kisses on things. There's no transfer of anything. It's plastic. It is cute though. She's got a, a tiny little mouth print if you can see really closely here. Um, that's supposed to align with the mouth of the doll and then you leave like a lipstick on her, but it doesn't work. I don't know how this is supposed to work. I saw, you know, other other comments or things that were like, well, mine's dried up and like, okay. Like, is there supposed to be something in here? I don't know. I have no idea. Moving on. <laughs> The lipstick is very cute, but I don't know how it works practically. She comes with a teeny little bouquet, which I think is so cute. Another very sort of classic Mattel plastic bouquet of that time and era. Just cute. And then she's got, I've tied her back in here for safekeeping, uh, but she's really pretty. The thing about Barbie of this era is that there are lots of inconsistencies for how I think they appear. Maybe that's where the stencil was placed on the face when they were made or whatever, but like a lot of the faces seem to vary, I think, quite a lot. Kissing Barbie is no exception. This one, I think this is a very standard example of what a Kissing Barbie may look like. I don't know if you just got a glimpse of the back of her head, but she is part bald. Um, I'll show you that again in a moment. But she she's very pretty. She's got this sort of pout sculpt, if you will. Although she's more of a, I think I've said this before, she's she's goofy. So underneath the face is actually a, a little clear plastic skull with what appears to be like a little duck mouth <laughs> where the lips would be. And the head is actually just like a rubber mask that is sort of stapled to the back of her head. So she she's a weird one. One and she sort of looks like it. Like, I don't think this resembles what you think of when you hear Barbie, especially Superstar Barbie. This is the same era. She's supposed to be a superstar doll, just sort of in a smooching motion. I don't know, she's weird. I think she's pretty, but she's weird. So maybe I can show you on the back here. She's got very little hair, RIP, her hair, very sad, but there is a sort of like thread stapling her head together. So, you know, I was the sort of the nuisance of a child, a Dennis the Menace that probably would have snipped that string and been like, what's underneath this? It is spooky. It's nightmare fuel. So, you know, embark at your own risk. Anyway, she has got a very, very nice, beautiful long giraffe neck to reach Ken all the better with. And on the back, you can see her little button here. She is designed to sort of give him a smooch. So it's, it's very subtle, but you get like a smooching sound. Does that sound like kissing? I don't know, man. I think that's a stretch. Is she broken? I don't know. All the other videos I've seen sound the same, so I don't think she's malfunctioning. I think it's just a silly gimmick. Also, that motion's not a lot. So like, I know that under the mask, you actually get a little bit of like a, like a, an extension and like a pinching. That duck mouth actually does do something, but you can't see that under the rubber mask. She just looks like she's craning her neck and, you know, snapping a vertebrae. <laughs> I don't know. Very cute though. She's one of a kind. The dress is very pretty. It's got little flowers and little kiss prints and she's just, she's cute. Unfortunately, she is a little, a little alopecia Barbie. She's got just, you know, only so much hair. So we kind of bring it to the front, I think, to make her feel fuller. Really cute, a sweet face. Some of these have like spooky faces and then some of them have really very, very pretty faces. So this, as I've said before, I, I'm a face collector. And if you happen to find like a really good one, even if she's in sort of rough shape, do your best to just clean her up and make her your own because I think I think it's more interesting and more like valuable to have a pretty doll of, of any release. So there's, there's sort of a, I don't know, middle of the road example for you. She also comes with a stand, naturally. And then I've got all of her original paperwork. <laughs> 
her instructions, okay? Which are very cute. Again, the illustrations are gorgeous. I love how endearingly yellow the paper is after all this time. The idea is that you press the button on her back, fully down her head tilts and puckers, and makes a kissing sound when the panel's released. I don't think so. But, you know, <laughs> one man's smooch is another man's cracked vertebrae. <laughs> She has a stand, fit her into the stand. Um, there is advice that you are supposed to, what is it, pretend as if she's blowing a kiss by like, you know, holding her mouth, your hand to her mouth and like, I don't know, playing the mechanism. I don't think, I think this is a stretch, but she's pretty, so. And the theme is so on brand. Like you've got a, you've got a dress <laughs> covered in kisses and you've got these charming little love letters that are sealed with a kiss. I think this is, it's very, it's very appropriate for Valentine's Day. And that one in fact sort of, I guess, shows you what maybe to do with the lipstick that doesn't work. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, is it all imaginative play? I don't know. She's supposed to be able to leave kisses on Ken and on you and on letters and you know, whatever. I, I wanna know, what is the truth? <laughs> Does the lipstick, did the lipstick ever work? I need someone to tell me. Super cute little letters. These have, you know, never been punched out. Yada yada, bouquet, something something. Well, hey, if you need more lipstick for kissing Barbie and Christy, uh, you can send this voucher that I'm sure expired the same month she was put out to Mattel and you can get two replacement uh, liquid lipsticks. That's exciting. For a dollar fifty. I don't even think, what can you get for a dollar fifty anymore? Pop, pop, pop off in the comments. Whatever you can get for a dollar fifty. I couldn't think of a thing. And then of course you've got her fashion, you know, catalog of all the things you can buy. Ken and Skipper. Skipper at this time was wild. Skipper had like 16 different faces. Um, so I don't know. That's a fun fact. <laughs> Just a fun little anecdote. Yeah, maybe I'll go back through this and give you like a close scan up later with some B-roll footage, but this is a lot of, they're all like best buy fashions of this era. Designer originals, fashion favorites, the collectibles, all of those lines, and they're very cute. So I'll give you a closer glimpse on those later. But that's, that's kissing Barbie. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't believe that. Have you ever kissed anybody before Barbie? I don't, I don't know. So moving on to number two, um, I think this is the most, with, um, again, I've got one that's like obviously Valentine's Day Barbie later, but without saying as much, I think the next one is the most obvious contender. This is Loving You Barbie. This is, I think, such a pretty doll. She again is a great example of 80s dolls. I think she's 83, 83, 70s and 80s dolls within one release, you know, Crystal Barbie or Peaches and Cream Barbie, any of those, they all have really different, the, the faces vary a lot. So she is another, another example of, of that. This I think is a very lady of the night sort of eye makeup application that I live for. I think she's so pretty. Barbie of this, of this era sometimes has like a really thin sort of waspy lip that I don't think is very pretty on her. And then sometimes she's got like, you know, wonky eyes or, or whatever. This is a pretty, a pretty symmetrical and I think very, very nicely, uh, generously applied face. She's just a fun one. The dress is in two pieces. So you've got like a, and actually I think it might be three pieces. Is it two, three? I think the sleeves are attached to the, the red part, the torso, um, but the skirt is separate. So if you have, there's another doll. What is she called? There's another like basic playline doll of this era that has like the same outfit, but the skirt is cropped. It's like a T-length skirt. If you know, somebody does, comment below. But anyway, this would maybe be a fun piece to sort of switch out with others. She's very pretty. I think the, the dress is sort of simple and straightforward. I love that the sweetheart neckline is taken literally and that you get sort of a plunging waist into a point. It's just very, it's very, very cute. She comes with a stamp and she comes with love notes, a pencil, a pencil and a case so that you can make heart-shaped stickers and I, I love you stamps and give them away. Again, like it's not branding itself as a a Valentine's Day doll, but it's a Valentine's Day doll. I don't know, like, what else would this be? She's super, super cute. I was lucky to find this in at a convention for a very good price. She in box now goes for a couple hundred. So if you have if you have one, congratulations. She's she's a favorite of mine for sure. Just some pretty graphics. I will not be taking this one out of the box, sadly. Sorry, boo. I I'm keeping her in box for for me, but. She's, she's very, very pretty. And uh, I think this would be a fun one to collect because of the variations. Like the faces do make such a big difference to me and they, they vary by quite a bit. So I don't know, if you're shopping for one, do some looking around. And if you, if you see one that like really speaks to you and she's just, you know, facially just magnetic, grab that one because like she looks different all the time. Very pretty, not overtly Valentine's Day, but canonical in my heart. Here's a love note for me, 
Barbie, because you're so beautiful. Here's Loving You Barbie doll dressed in velvety red hearts with love notes, stamper, and heart stickers. Loving you Barbie. My love note is all hearts, because I love you Barbie. Loving you Barbie. Here's one for Barbie, because she loves us too. Loving You Barbie doll comes in a red heart gown with love notes, heart stickers, and an I Love You stamper from Mattel. So next is one that I do not have, but I think she is, she's a, a really sensible option. I was looking for other, you know, inspiration as I was, you know, sort of scouring for ideas and whatever, and I was thinking like, well, there's so many, like, date Barbies, there's so many, like, things that she's doing on a date with Ken. And, you know, it's one of those certainly has to partake, you know, thematically. And I think your most obvious option is Dream Date Barbie from 1982. So here's a probably bad phone image of this, but Dream Date Barbie is this, like, really enormous, fluffy, bouffant, ridiculous, gaudy outfit that, you know, very in line with that era has so many different ways you can wear all the components of the outfit. But it's this really electric, like, grape and fuchsia combination that I think is properly nuts. It's crazy. Coming from me, I think it's 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 a lot, but it's very pretty and so much of a fan favorite that it was actually re-released in like a reproduction slash variation a number of years ago. And I think, you know, red and purple and pink and purple evo evoke such a Valentine's Day, you know, brand in my mind that, you know, of all the other options for her to go on a date, this felt the most like Valentine's Day. She's just this, this very, it's peak 80s glamour Barbie. I can't think of like a, a more ridiculous silhouette than Dream Date Barbie, and uh, she's a lot. Very pretty. I think, I think she's less my style than some other dolls that exist or that I have or whatever. <laughs> I'll say unkindly, unfairly, there's a reason I don't have one to show you, but she is, if you are an 80s collector, this is like like 80s, like dipped in acid and like set on fire. Like it's 80s.org. It's a lot. Very, very 80s Barbie. Dream date Barbie. Dream date Barbie. Dream date Ken doll sold separately. Knock, knock. Ken here. Wait, Barbie's changing to ruffle again. Dream date Barbie has a ruffled party dress she can wear 10 different ways. This way's perfect for tonight. Oh, Ken, your dream date's ready. Dream date Barbie. Dream date Barbie doll in a dress with a change around ruffle. Dream date Ken doll sold separately from Mattel. My next option, I'm going to consult my Sarah Sink Eames Barble here, and I want to show you, if you didn't already see the bookmark, I'm going to show you Magnificence from 1965. I actually have uh, an image of this we can put on the screen too, but this is a very, very pretty, uh, very classic mid-60s um, take on couture and something that is very, like, debutante very high fashion, very um, feminine without being like sexy. It's just very classy. And I think again, the, the pairing of red satin and, and pink tulle is a very, you know, Valentine's Day sort of combination. It had a very, very pretty and very delicate sort of underskirt crinoline. And then the dress is actually, it's a dress, but the skirt is like a separate piece uh, fabric wise from the, from the torso. And then you've got this like very specific overcoat that has tails on the front, but nothing in the back. And then fur, of course, because it's Barbie. It's a very pretty, very coveted, special, fan favorite, expensive outfit. And then there's like, this doesn't show it well, but the image, I will put it here, has some beautiful like floral applique, like flocked glitter. It's not a die cut, but like it's it's a print on the front of the, of the skirt on the dress. Just a very sort of pretty floral mosaic, and then there's like some glitter on it. So, you know, every aspect of this is very fragile and very delicate and doesn't always hold up well over time. Time. So if you have one at all, congratulations. If you have one in really nice shape, then like hang on to that because that's a special one. The next one on my list of Valentine's Day but not Valentine's Day dolls is Secret Hearts Barbie. This is a 19, I'm gonna guess before I go look, I think it's a 1990... Two, it's 92. Uh, 1992 uh, had Secret Hearts Barbie, which had a, a dress that was almost the same texture or like, it's not fabric, I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's a iridescent silvery white slash pink slash blue crinkly texture that, that Crystal Barbie had. It's the same sort of gown, but you know, leveled up or evolved. And there was a gimmick that the front of the skirt had 
like tiers and at the the trim of each tier was a panel that you could apply a secret heart to it was an ice pack you put this like heart that she came with in the freezer and then you'd sort of like sweep the ice pack heart over these these trim panels and you would get like hearts that appear on her dress it was very cute so images here of secret hearts barbie she came alone and then she came with ken as an option too of course so like I don't know. I think that's that's a very appropriate Valentine's Day. Like, her dress is covered in hearts. She's clearly on a date. Ken is there. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Again, this is in the same way that the, the last doll, or not the last one, was... Uh, I just did Magnificence. I mean the one before. Dream Date Barbie was, you know, pinnacle of 80s glamour. I think Secret Hearts Barbie is, like, very evocative of iconic 90s Barbie, huge white hair, you know, giant eyes and, and this like huge bouffant skirt. It's just this like, she's she's very glamorous and very privy. I, that's the sort of doll that, you know, given the choice or the chance as a child, I would have gone feral and, you know, knocked over kids in the playground for, you know, Secret Hearts Barbie. I also, I think the gimmicks are fun. Like I, I say a lot that makes it maybe sound as if I think the gimmicks are like a cheap cop out. I love a gimmick. Let me make that clear. But you know, especially Especially with a child's toy, I think the, there's a perfect marriage between this like heightened femininity, this like you know uh, incomprehensible glamour that like nobody can achieve, paired with such a silly, fun, engaging, childlike approach to toy play. Like hearts magically appear on her dress, I would have lost my mind. I would have lost my mind. She's beautiful. Show your secret, secret heart, Barbie. Is it the jewels you wear, or is it your golden hair? Secret Hearts Barbie doll's gown has hearts that appear with ice and disappear with your touch. Ken doll sold separately. So we have finally reached my like actual canonical Valentine's Day doll. There have been lots of them. So this was a this was a pruning down to a, you know, particular choice. All throughout the like, I don't know, er, early to mid 90s through like 2000, I don't know, probably 6, there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of Valentine's Day Barbies. The reason why I didn't want to just, re you know, recreate that catalog is because it's easy for you to shop and find and enjoy, whatever. They're so easy to find. Those dolls are, they're Playline dolls, they're like the skinny classic boxes that you can just, you know, they're everywhere. And actually, I think there are other creators and videos and whatever that catalog that, so like please go enjoy those videos. The one that I think is a standout for me is 1994 Valentine Barbie. I don't even think it's Valentine's Day. I think it's a Valentine Barbie. And she's got this very sweet little dress with cupids all over it. Big fluffy shoulders, you know, bright, big teethy grin with red lips. And she actually, she has a little choker with a tiny like sequin heart on it that I think is like so cute. It's it's a little bit like, you know, it's a little, it's a little sexy for Barbie, um, but that's also the sort of era where where we see Barbie sort of depicted in these like almost like baby doll gowns like tiny little you know flouncy fluffy frilly mini skirts and and you know big big bouffant white hair she's just she's classic 90s Barbie to me and some others around those you know following years either preceding that or after I don't think the dresses are quite as cute or the faces aren't quite as nice or whatever. I think pretty consistently, 94 Valentine Barbie for me is the winner. She's, I mean, there are some really cute ones like Y2K and later. That's, I don't collect a lot of those dolls. In fact, I don't think I have any of them. I don't think. I've got some Bratz dolls. Does that count? But but 94 is, she's, she's special. She's just pretty. And I think like that's, again, something that I would have opened on Valentine's Day and just been like, you know, just dying. She's, she's gorgeous. The next one's sort of a fun, like, I don't know, it's not like a deep dive by any means, but it's it's like a, a B tier option that I wanted to sort of play with because it's sort of d fun and different. So in 88 and 89, there were fashions of a whole collection and the, the collection was called Dinner Date Fashions that had various pink ensembles, right? Because it's Barbie. So there were lots to choose from, but I, I thought one that actually might be fun is, I thought, what is the stock number on that? I'll get into that later. 
Anyway, 89 was the 30th anniversary of Barbie, and there was a Target exclusive magazine that actually I have somewhere and I couldn't find, that with the magazine came in ex an exclusive fashion. It was this like pink little fluffy dress with a scarf and a bow, no shoes, and it was like the 30th anniversary dress. Well, the dinner date fashions had the same garment, and the more common option that you will see usually, my understanding is it's more common, um, is a blue variation, but the pink one also exists in the dinner date collection, and that actually comes with shoes. Um, so I have for you here, this is the 30th anniversary little uh, dinner date fashion that came with the Target um, magazine. It's n it's really nothing to write home about, but I think the silhouette is so pretty. Again, this tiny, ridiculous little skirt <laughs> is, um, it's not exactly Lady of the Night, but like, I don't know, I would wear it. <laughs> um, I love the scarf. I love this, like, wonderful, like, silly, huge shoulder made out of, you know, cotton jersey. It's just, it's a very sort of silly outfit. Um, but if you, like, if by some chance you have found a like mint Target magazine fashion without the magazine itself, it doesn't come with shoes. So make sure that you're like, you know, pairing shoes with it or something. The dinner date fashion actually does. So that's, I think, the only main distinguishing difference. Um, I've got photos that you can see here of what I'm talking about. The blue variation is very pretty. It's like the soft powder blue, almost like a sky blue, cool tone, very pretty. Exact same dress, silhouette, accessories, but blue. And then, I, I don't know, of course I prefer the pink version. I think pink is more appropriate for Valentine's Day. She's going on a dinner date with Ken. Can you imagine going to, like, I don't know, Cheesecake Factory in this? I would die. This is so cute. This is actually displayed on a <laughs> wrong holiday doll. I forget which 90 year this is. Uh, Russell Stover Easter Barbie? I just think she's got a sweet face. She came with a little hat and Easter bag, basket, and whatever. But but the fashion, I think, is just very pretty. It's it's almost a tutu sewn onto a t-shirt, you know? And um, <laughs> that really speaks to me. I just love, I love silly, ridiculous, feminine, frilly fashions. Again, these are not in any particular order, so we're going back to 1969 with this one. I want to show you actually a couple pieces. So in 69 there were, this was a really fun sort of turning chapter for Barbie. Mod had already come out and existed for a couple years, and we're shifting into the 70s, and I think the fashion really reflects that. I want to show you Romantic Ruffles. This is a very, very fun one. We have one here in the shop on a hair fair head. She's a, she's a really fun classic mod Barbie. Beautiful long eyelashes. I think her, her face is like, she's minty. She's very pretty. This is just a ridiculous, again, like what is more Barbie than pink and glitter and ribbons and roses? She's She's beautiful. Now, roses, she normally would come with very cool, very specific earrings, very pretty. They're, they're fabric roses actually on a chain that we don't have for her, but they would normally hang like just at the, the nape of the neck or just, you know, just above the shoulder. Huge big pink roses, they're very pretty. This would come with a little silver tinsel bag that matches the top of the dress. I, I think it's very silly. This is, you know, romantic ruffles. Imagine this is your, your date dress, but again, very very, very late 60s. This, I think, is, is a perfect example of some wonderful vintage teenage fashions. I think this era of Barbie really does show her in her, like, most teenage -y sort of era. I think Barbie often in her earlier years and her later years, understandably, it gets mistaken as more of an adult in her, like, canon. But this, this I think, looks like a teenage girl getting ready to, like, go for a date to the prom. Like, she's, she's so beautiful. And uh, I, I wish we had those earrings because they're, they're very fun. Uh, actually, I have some photos, again, so we can enjoy photos. She's a fun one. And, you know, if this is her idea of romance, then count me in. The other thing that I want to show you from 1969 is one original Mattel Barbie magazine. This is from January and February of 1969, and this, I think, is, this has been, like, out in my home for the last, like, two weeks, because <laughs> I've been very excited to celebrate Valentine's Day. It didn't come soon enough this year. I've been itching to get, like, red and pink and glitter things out. And so this is, this is a very pretty sort of a time capsule example of maybe what you would have seen in conjunction with mod era, late 60s, early 70s dolls. Um, there's some really fun, very sort of haphazard illustrations in here that are just they're very they're very sort of but and there's some beautiful ones too like that's 
gorgeous. What does Mattel do better than charmingly advertise its own products, you know, through creative avenues? <laughs> so you can shop her winter wedding and you can shop her, you know, all these, all these wonderful fashions that are in here. And then some of them are so, like, I think the last panel, oh, it's the back. Like, that's, that's so goofy. These, like, cartoons that are completely, you know, <laughs> they're very interpretive depictions of people. They're, they're highly stylized and, you know, only look like people if you're really looking closely. Um, there's a whole segment about, like, Romeo and Juliet in here. What a beautiful little, like, candy stripe horse, you know? It's just, it's charming. I don't have much of a collection of Mattel magazines, but I think this is a, a very fun, light-hearted addition to, uh, to to the lineup. And for Valentine's Day, I think the the vibe of Valentine's Day can be sort of like silly and playful and lighthearted. So this to me is, you know, the pinnacle of that. It's, it's very kitschy. I think there's something like warm and fuzzy and charming about just the, the cover of that, that giant heart. I want this like in a frame up all year round. It's so pretty. So the next one I sadly also don't have here for you, but I do think that this video would be incomplete without mentioning her. There was a Sweet Roses collection in 1990... No way, 83? That's not right. Is that right? Well, I'm way off. What do I know about Barbie? In 1983, there was a Sweet Roses collection, and Sweet Roses Barbie actually is, this is, you know, controversial opinion. I, I prefer Sweet Roses Barbie, but the, the real, like, standout of that lineup is Sweet Roses PJ. She has the same sculpt as Steffi and, and all the other, you know, characters that have that face, but she's this really soft, very sort of dialed back, minimalistic face with a really, like, pouty, engaged appearance. She just looks very very like soft and sweet and the dress is gorgeous so sweet roses i think was intended to smell rosy like they had like a fragrance maybe i'm confusing that with perfume pretty let me know <laughs> am i having a stroke <laughs> what's it called sweet roses pj had this really incredible satin tiered dress and each tier appeared to be almost like a flower petal she came with all these tiny little rose i don't know appliques but they're like on ribbons that you can tie on her hair or around her neck or like at the shoulder you know the wrist and just sort of like completely shower her in these little roses and each tier of the dress became sort of a gradient in color it ends in this like very pretty pastel powdery pink she is she's beautiful so we have photos for you to enjoy she is i i think I prefer the Sweet Roses Barbie for other reasons, but the dress on PJ is, like, that's the whole thing. The dress is really phenomenal. She really becomes a rose. I mean, it's just like this cascading, beautiful ombre of, of fuchsia into, into, like, this soft rose color. She's very pretty, and I love a doll that has accessories you can wear a bunch of different ways. So, you know, just, just giving me a, like, bag of, you know, roses, I'm happy. I can stick them anywhere. I, I think that's a very sweet touch, and again she's a very classic i think the word icon gets thrown around and iconic as an ad adjective get thrown around sort of irresponsibly these days but truly i think like that's one of the the icons of barbie in the 70s name something bigger you know in iconography than barbie and uh, the 80s really had some some standouts and i think pj is one of them sweet roses pj is a fan favorite again if you have one congratulations cherish her she's very pretty and she she makes sense in the lineup for me and last but not least i brought in one of my my new favorites every once in a while you have to like treat yourself a little bit right spoil yourself on something fun i brought in something that i've been coveting for a long time this is campus sweetheart uh, an american girl and this is one of those outfits from the 1600 line in the late 60s, this is 65, just before the turn of mod, that really shows the, the you know, love of accessories and glamour for Barbie. It's just beautiful. This is actually the same silhouette and like general pattern as senior prom that is often shown on midge it's a green and turquoise or green and blue tool stripes that are all up and down the skirt i think i mean naturally i prefer this color combination uh, me and everyone else that's why it's you know so expensive but in the in the, <laughs> the sarah sink eames barbel i'll show a photo of the the same thing i'm describing she actually articulates this as like barbie's valentine's day dress and i i hadn't thought of it that way until i realized like it totally is. I mean, she's got a bouquet of roses and very obviously like a trophy for winning you know, she's the, the sweetheart of, of the campus, but it's red and pink, you know, like how could this not be a, a beautiful Valentine's Day dress? Maybe for the sake of this, I'll 
pop this off here. She is, she is a fun one. This comes with a pink string of pearls and red open toe mules. And let's see if I can find this in here. This is, this is a fun one. I, I decided to spoil myself. I saved up my, I pinched my pennies and, and I have no regrets. Every once in a while, you just have to treat yourself, right? Campus Sweetheart, Barbie doll was chosen campus sweetheart at the Valentine's Day dance. She received a bouquet of six red satin roses with ferns. Yeah, those green feathers, not ferns. As she specifies, ferns of green feathers. Thanks, Sarah, sorry. She was awarded a silver colored metal cup, loving cup with the raised B on the side. And the gown she wore was fashioned of beautiful white satin with pearls. I'm sorry, with panels of red and pink tulle over the uh, full satin skirt. Long white tricot gloves, graduated pink pearls, and red open toe shoes completed the set. It's, it's a fan favorite for a reason. I think it's magnetic to look at. And I don't know, I, I was thinking about like, what is the earliest depiction of a Valentine's Day Barbie? And like, truly they don't exist before the 90s, but there are so many that came before that are not given that credit, and I, I think that's unfair. So um, I wanted to go all the way back to 65 and everything in between, loving you and kissing Barbie. Like these are these are Valentine's Day dolls, so give them the credit that they're due. It's a fun journey, and I don't know. I think Valentine's Day is one that is also sort of hard to decorate for because again, there's not like a central thing that you do. There's not an activity or whatever. You can like get roses and, and chocolates, but I think decorating, if you're a doll person, if you're a lunatic that has a whole closet full of dolls, get some of those seasonal specific relevant ones out for holidays, decorate with them. You know, I, I cannot, for my own like mental space, for clutter's sake, I can't have my whole collection out at one time. It feels like assaulting to have a house full of dolls for me. And so I love to be able to sort of cycle through ones that I, I almost forgot about, right? Ones that have been uh, in a closet or downstairs or whatever, and to bring them back out for special occasions and to appreciate them while they're out. Because for me, I think, Part of why you appreciate something is because it's temporary, right? It goes away. And if I'm surrounded by them all the time, I think you become sort of blind to these wonderful gems that you have in your collection. Don't be afraid of like putting them into a, you know, vacation for a little while and then bringing them back out because it, it makes me appreciate mine all the more when I do. And there's a lot to be said about, you know, the romance of Valentine's Day and the sentiment and there's a lot of I think a stock put into you know, having a valentine or it being something that involves a partner and I don't know as I clumsy around with this book <laughs> I don't know if that's I don't know if that's worthwhile it's not for me if you need to get yourself some chocolates and roses and enjoy your dolls then do it and in the meantime we have a whole boutique full of things for you to add to your own collection over in VDC and if you watch this entire video <laughs> then thank you for joining me in a little trip down memory lane with some here and some not here and if there's any that you think were worthy of credit that I didn't give then let me know let me have it and we'll maybe pop those in the next one but until then, enjoy, and from us to you, happy Valentine's Day.